And we're live. Welcome to this week's Five Minute Friday. This is this uh, yeah, short show where I try to tackle a freediver question within five minutes. So this week's question is, which one is the best freediving mask or the best freediving mask for me? Now, first of all, there is for sure no general answer to that. Freediving masks have a few qualities, like they are low in volume. So that means they are the volume between uh, the glass and the face should be as small as possible. That is uh, for uh, not sacrificing too much air to equalize the mask. So that's what all freediving masks have in common. But then there's basically two basic uh, models. One is a model like this one here that has a glass, um, well, tempered glass as the front. And then on the other side, you have, for example, this one here, which has plastic lenses. So these have different qualities. First of all, what, what I hear quite often is that um, free divers post or so and say like, oh, um, a glass, uh, sorry, a plastic lens will distort your view. And I'm not exactly sure if that is correct. So the story is this. Glass um, lenses, they distort your view. So you know that when you are uh, going underwater, you see every bit, everything a little bit augmented, about 25% bigger than it actually would be. That is because of the breaking index, optical breaking index of glass. So when a light ray goes from water into the glass and then leaves the glass and goes into the air until it hits your eyes, um, this combination of breaking indexes, index C, sorry, uh, um, leads to an augmentation. And masks with plastic lenses do not have that problem because the breaking index of this plastic is the same like the breaking index of water. So basically you see things undistorted from that perspective. However, as you can see from this perspective, yeah, the lenses are curved and that can lead to a certain um, distortion, maybe. However, if you are used to a glass mask and then try a plastic for the first time, you have a completely different um, picture of the underwater world. And it is very weird when you experience that the first time. Um, it took me also a, se a session or two to get used to it. And now it doesn't matter to me anymore. I guess it's just uh, the visual cortex uh, that is compensating for such a phenomena has to adapt um, over a short period. So having said that, um, which one is now the best? How do you find out? Um, well, the best is the one that fits you the best. There is a common misconception out there how you test that, which mask is the one that fits you best. And the misconce misconception goes like this. You put the mask to your face and you suck it in. And if you can suck it in, then it's a mask that fits. Okay, I'll demonstrate that the wrong way. So you put it on your face, you suck it in. I can suck it in, it holds. Oh, that is a mask that fits me. It even fits me when I'm not or wearing my uh, non-diving three-day beard or four-day maybe by now. Um, so that would work. I'll show you now how you can actually check if a mask works. So the point is this, you have to put the strap to the front, get it out of the way, this way, huh? Voila. Then you look to the sky and you place the mask without wiggling or pressing on your face. Then you see, for example, this mask is too narrow, for my face, it creates a gap here under and the lower end of the mask and you have a gap here on top. That means this mask here is actually way too small for my face and I should not wear it. Um, why should I not press it on the face and use the flexibility of the skirt to make it fit to my face? Um, well, matter of fact is, if you use the flexibility of the skirts to make it fit your face, you can literally make fit any mask on any face. But that's not the point. The point is the flexibility of the skirt, which you can see here, should be not used to up, so to speak, um, to make the mask fit to your face. It should be used 
as a flexibility potential, put it this way, while you're diving to depth, so the mask can move on your face, so it's more forgiving, so you have some uh, leeway until you can equalize the mask the next time. So that's why they have to be flexible, not to make it fit your face. So if I take a mask that is a little wider, so this one here, the Molchanov's mask, strap to the front, look to the sky, place it on my face without wiggling, then you can see from this perspective, that's an okay fit. Here, not much of a gap, if any. On top, no gap at all. If I want to suck this in, I can do that anytime. This mask fits really, really well for me. So they are basically narrow masks, like this one here. That's the, the Aqualung um, Micro Mask. This is the Molchanov's mask, which is, I would call, a medium to large size. And then we have a mask like the Sphera that are very wide. And I can show you also, sorry, that was on the microphone. When you have a mask that is too wide, just to get the strap out of the way. Here you get then some gaps on my face. It still fits. I can still suck it in, but there's definitely more space. So I can go and choose between those two. They both work for me. The other one here, clearly not a go for me. Last but not least, glass masks or glass lenses are a little bit more forgiving um, when it comes to being scratched. So the ultimate thing you need to do is always put, this video is not sponsored by anyone, um, just to make the, the disclaimer here, which we need to do on YouTube. Okay, sorry, I should not force this in there, but put the strap behind it. Goes in the box and you need to keep a plastic lens mask in the box all the time, or it will scratch, it will bend and uh, the glass lenses might pop out. This way, I used my um, plastic lens uh, masks for months and years of daily um, teaching, so they have quite uh, an extended lifetime this way. All right, so that was it for how to fit the mask, how to find which is the best free diving mask for you. Um, this is it for the five minute Friday this week. So please uh, keep on the, the, the good questions coming. That was one that actually came in on one of the, I don't know how many social media channels. So thank you very much. Um, if you want to follow this, this five minute Friday, then please sign up or subscribe to this channel and uh, a like always helps as well. So thank you very much. And uh, I hope I see you next week again.